drown. Make like the Titanic. Well, recently I started working on this 3D printed boat. I started this project back in October, and it's taken me quite some time to kind of learn my CAD program, which is a Fusion 360. Now the boat is solid ABS. Uh, as far as filming goes, I kind of loosely document this entire thing, mainly because I've kind of started on and off, and I may have lost a few clips and all that. And it's, to be honest, it's quite really boring watching me kind of acetone weld a bunch of ABS parts together. So I'm just going to kind of condense it to a little short four minute-ish video, and uh... Hope you guys will stick around for the end of that because uh, we're going to go drive this thing, but this is just going to be part one of this boat too. So uh, let's get started with the uh, build process, I guess.
it's raining so hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm late on the video. I'm melting. I know you're melting. Alright, cool. That works. Uh, that works. Alright, so the hatches are all sort of sealed on this boat. I think we're just gonna throw in the water and just YOLO. Does anyone still say YOLO? I hope we don't hit by lightning either, because it's thundering. I guess we might as well launch it now. That's a lot of water to put in. Washy. It's not raining super hard, but the thing is we can tape most of this stuff up. Oh, let's go drive it up there. That was cool. I am the captain now. I am the captain now. <laughs> Look at me. I am the captain now. We're not making any headway. You got this, captain. <laughs> it's actually making headway. We're actually getting up this creek. I don't think we're gonna make it up here. Yeah, I'm backing off. Oh, I lost the propeller. Those are expensive. You got two more coming, dude. <laughs> well, I guess we'll end it on this. Let me see it. Yeah, I lost the pro I lost the new one too. That's the 40 millimeter one I lost. I probably I probably hit something and spun it off. This boat actually goes pretty fast with you know just one screw though. I'm gonna drive it a little bit more, I guess, just because we're here. What if you lose that one? I'm not gonna do it over there, though, because it's underwater now. It would look cool. It would look cool. Okay, we'll do it. And I release you. Well, at least we didn't lose anything. Oh, wait. Shut up, Sam. Actually, I want to see how dry it is on the inside here first. Because we were, we were pretty much going up that waterfall. Hey, look, it's bone dry. That actually works pretty well. Well, I guess it actually works pretty well. The verdict um, for, I guess, this test was, I like it. It's actually not bad at all. So for uh, the most part, it's actually like 70%-ish complete. Uh, the reason for like this part one, part two thing is uh, this is there's actually a lot that goes into bottle boat building and whatnot. I really wanted to get this thing out in the water and test it. And plus, um, I plan on doing another video this week. Um, if you can kind of figure out what that is, uh, that was supposed to be this week's video, but unfortunately, it doesn't fly very well. So we're going to do this one right now. But I guess with that being said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and release the plans for this thing now so you can actually build one and print one yourself. A uh, quick uh, few tips for actually printing it. Uh, the hull, which is um, this big three or five piece thing. Yeah, it's five pieces. Uh, every part should be under 200 by 200 millimeters in both in all directions. 
200, 200 by 200 millimeters. I think most Persa i3 printer styles should be able to print this boat with no problem whatsoever. The wall thickness I printed on the hull pieces were 1.2 millimeters, and the infill was about 25% for everything down in um, the hull. The top superstructure and cabin, that was still 1.2 millimeter thickness, but 20% infill. And um, that's about all there is to it. So I used about um, two spools of this stuff. This is the 3 millimeter. 3 millimeter ABS filament from uh, Inland, I think it's like Micro Center's brand or whatever. It's a uh, 1 kilogram, so I think you need that much plastic. I haven't tried PLA other materials, but I really like working with this uh, ABS. Except it's kind of mildly carcinogenic to print in your house and all that, so I actually run plumbing for my printer to blow air outside, but that's another story. But PLA should work just as fine as, as well. The only thing for why I chose the ABS was uh, it was very easy to actually finish and work with. And the nice thing is you can actually dissolve it with acetone, so you can really chemically smooth this thing. I did think about putting this thing in like a big chamber to vapor polish it, but I figured if it wasn't really worth my time to build the chamber, I'd rather just brush it on there and then just sand it. That's why you see the primer on the boat right now. So that's gotta get finished, but that's uh, that's in part two. Uh, the deck itself was laser cut out of um, ABS plastic. I think it's about three millimeters thick or so. I will release the DXF for that. Um, hopefully one of you guys that's really good at working with those things could convert it to PDF and I can upload it somewhere for those who you who don't have access to a CAD program that can open that. Also, I will be releasing the STL for the deck as well if you guys want to try to cut that and print that out as well. It didn't really make sense to cut out a flat piece of, or to print out a flat piece of plastic. It was way faster to cut it, but you never know. As far as uh, required hardware, I originally designed this boat to fit almost any sort of brushless motor like a... Um, Anything with a standard 16 by 19 millimeter bolt pattern should fit, but I use these Avroto motors. Now the cool thing is a uh, quick shout out to uh, Jim and uh, Victor. Uh, they helped hook me up with these uh, Avroto motors. Jim is actually Monto RC. Uh, they actually live in Columbus, and I stopped by down there for a day, and they gave me like a handful of these uh, these old kind of used ones. So that's pretty sweet. I'm actually putting a good use in this boat, and I think these will be very very decent motors. I did intentionally design it for a small motor, so the clearance is very tight as far as if you're trying to use these 3520s. These are the bigger ones. I've used the 3514s or 3515s in like my past projects at flight tests, but these are the slightly bigger ones. Uh, as far as the stuffing tube goes, I got that from Banggood. Uh, you can pick those things up anywhere. I think the diameter is... One second. The diameter on these stuffing tubes is like um, 8 millimeters, yeah. They're 8 millimeters and they're like 25 to 30 centimeters long. Funny thing is I ordered like these off of Banggood. I ordered the 30, the 25 millimeter version ones. They gave me 125 and they gave me 330. So I'm like, okay. But the nice thing is I just cut them down and just popped these little these little um, bearing inserts out and just stuck them back in. So that wasn't a big deal. Now as far as the uh, rudder stuffing tube and rudder post, uh, these are just brass stock that you can get anywhere. I use these these sizes right here. And also the U joints in the boat too. Uh, those are Trax's little U joints. They're four millimeter by four mil four millimeter by four millimeter on both ends. But you can get those roughly anywhere. So you can even get metal universal U joints as well, even though they probably make more noise. But anything like that should definitely float the boat. Another thing with the boat though is it actually requires a lot of weight to get down to the waterline. In this video when I was using it, I really only used the very minimum just to get to kind of float up right and. Surprisingly, it still wouldn't capsize, even with the um, being very, very light and really high up on the waterline. I actually had to use <laughs> these guys. Uh, these are like a 500 round thing of 22 bullets. I use these are heavy. I don't really know how much this weighs, but for all of you, I, all of you guys that have access to guns, which are awesome, the, I use two of these and one box of 50 rounds of 9mm to get this thing to float down the waterline. I'll probably replace it with lead or something like that because I'm. Um, I don't imagine traveling with these would be a good idea. Well, I guess this wraps up part one. Uh, as always, the STLs are free. You can go download it now. A really big shout out to my Patreon supporters. They really help me keep being able to do what I'm doing. Because right now I probably should charge for the CAD files as other people, so many other people do. But I'm just like, I really appreciate you guys just kind of like subscribing and watching and all that nonsense and commenting. And it helps keep me motivated to make these things and definitely makes them worth my while. So, yeah, be sure to go ahead and download the steel files, print them out, maybe tag me in the links below or comment if you build one and all that. I may even start an RC Groups thread where I can kind of better keep track of the comments and, like, the build thread on this. So I'll put a link to that down in the description somewhere. So, yeah, be sure to go ahead and like, share, do whatever, you know, you're supposed to do on YouTube. And I will see you guys in the near future.